Hello, uh, Dane Nix here. Um, I'm doing a video today on uh, using and appreciating Japanese eyedropper ink stop pens. I'm doing this uh, primarily because I just sent uh, an eyedropper pen to one of my granddaughters in uh, New Jersey. And uh, of course, I did not include the directions for how to use the thing. And also, uh, last, uh, in the last video I did, I talked about how to restore uh, the ink, uh, the, uh, the corks, replace the cork with a, an O-ring. And somebody asked me actually, how do, how do you use an eyedropper pen, especially a Japanese ink stop eyedropper? So it's uh, pretty simple. Um, and after I finish uh, talking about how to fill it and write with it and so on, I'm actually also going to talk about um, appreciating some of the older uh, pens. I've been collecting pens uh, more than 30 years, and I've gone through uh, American pens, which are where I started. Uh, I found the very first pen I ever found was a, a Conklin in an antique shop down in uh, New Bern, North Carolina. And I didn't know what I'd found, but I, I was attracted to it and started researching it and discovered that it was a really nice pen. And I still got that pen uh, in my collection. Actually, I write with it uh, on a, an occasional basis. Uh, but I have gone almost exclusively to writing with Japanese eyedropper pens. Uh, they have, uh, I like the ones from the 1940s, 1950s. Um, they have nice nibs. A lot of them have flexibility to them, which, you know, is fun to write with and um, they're just very high quality so uh, I highly recommend them if you can find one um, as some of the folks on the uh, the Facebook uh, pen sites uh, talk about uh, attend a, uh, a pen show and you'll find them there so anyway with uh, this um, eyedropper first of all of course is take the the, uh, the cap off and uh, you'll find, you know, the nib and the feed. Um, and to actually fill it, you have to unscrew the section. Pretty simple. And uh, then, of course, you've got the barrel that you have to uh, fill with, with ink. So I'm not actually going to mess with any ink today, but... Uh, this is, uh, you can use any ink that you like. Uh, they come in, uh, you know, multiple colors. If you go to the San Francisco Pen Show, they always have uh, an ink testing table, and they'll have hundreds of different inks in vials, and you can actually test those inks uh, for the colors, and uh, uh, they're actually great. So uh, this one is actually a, a pelican color. It's, uh, they're garnet. Uh, it's a great, it's a reddish, uh, dark reddish color. I, I really like that. And uh, so course you need the next piece it's an eyedropper pin so you need an eyedropper now simply uh, you know put that into the ink uh, suck in some ink and then uh, place it into your into your barrel now you'll with this kind of an eyedropper it'll take multiple times I've got a couple of different approaches that I use I've got these off of uh, uh, Amazon just do a a search for eyedroppers. You can see that this one is, I've used the uh, the garnet color. Uh, here's another approach, <laughs> a little bit larger, and you can fill your pen uh, very quickly with this. Now, the key here uh, is that you don't want to go too far. Now, in this pen, I don't know if you can quite see it, there's a, an ink stop, and you don't want to go above the ink stop with your uh, ink level. Uh, the reason is, is that if you do, uh, when you sh go to shut the pen back down, uh, that is actually the, the point at which the, uh, the section screws in, and it'll just uh, exude ink uh, through uh, the nib. So once you've uh, filled the pen to the point that you're happy with in terms of the uh, ink level, go ahead and screw it back down. You don't really need to add any additional uh, sealant or anything to the section. Uh, because uh, these are very high quality and they don't uh, they don't leak at least I, they have it in my experience now so basically now that you've sealed that down with the ink stop in inside 
um, you basically got, um, you know, uh, an ink container uh, that will not leak uh, because the ink stop actually fits inside the hole. I'll show you. There's a little hole in the end of the section here. And the ink stop that's inside the, the barrel here will fit right into that little hole and it will seal it up so that it will not uh, it will not leak. Now, of course, <laughs> one of the things I just did is I just dumped all the, if I had ink in that, I would dump the ink. So when you, uh, you shut the ink, uh, shut the pin up, uh, make sure that the barrel is pointing up in the, in the air, screw it down, tighten your finger tight, and then uh, you're ready to actually uh, travel with that pin. Now to write with it, you actually have to release the ink stop. And how do you do that? Well, simply unscrew the end of the pen. And you don't have to go very far. I mean, uh, that is probably all you need to go. I've just uh, maybe, you know, done four or five turns and that will actually release that ink stop and you'll be able to uh, get to write with it. Now, I've got a pad of paper here. Writing with a uh, fountain pen is different than writing with a ballpoint. Uh, you have to actually write it to a bit of an angle and uh, it takes a much lighter touch than a, a ballpoint pen. So it'll take some practice, but after a little while, um, you'll get the hang of it and, and it'll be easy. Now, one of the nice things about uh, the uh, ink stop is in terms of flow. Now, sometimes in terms of flow, it takes a little bit to actually get the ink into, into the uh, section feed. And the, the feed actually carries a lot of ink and uh, it will, um, you know, th this, the feed, feeds a little tiny slit in the in the nib uh, through capillary action. Uh, you look that up in your science uh, book. And um, uh, will actually, you know, work very well uh, holding ink inside that feed. Now, uh, you're right with it. Now, it, it might take a little uh, effort to get it moving. Uh, one of the things I'll do is I'll just shake it just a little bit uh, to speed things up and then uh, just write with it. And the ink stop pen, this particular pen will write you know, multiple pages uh, before it runs out of ink. Now, when you're finished uh, writing with the pen, uh, you simply, uh, I always like to hold it straight up and, uh, you know, let the ink uh, seep back into the barrel through the, uh, through the feed and the section, so on. And then when you're ready to actually shut it up, just go ahead and, uh, and screw the blind cap in. And now you've sealed up the, uh, the ink stop hole. And uh, again, the, uh, the pen is ready to, 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 uh, uh, to travel with or to put into a, uh, a purse or a pocket or whatever else. And then, of course, just uh, put the cap on uh, and you're ready to go. Now, one of the things that's sort of nice about this is that you can actually... Um, gauge your flow or minimize or increase your flow, uh, your ink flow in the, in the nib by measuring, um, by varying the, uh, the ink stop itself by unscrewing it. The more you, ink, you know, unscrew it, um, of course, the, uh, the more flow you get. Now, you do not need to, you know, I've often seen people, you know, pull this all the way out. Um, you don't need to do that to actually make the pen work. Now, if <laughs> if you uh, push that, it'll actually push ink out of the out of that little hole, uh, which is sort of uh, sort of cute. Uh, but anyway, uh, it won't uh, it won't shoot ink like the old uh, Schaefer's used to. Uh, my grandfather had uh, Schaefer pens, and my brothers and I uh, found them uh, on his desk one time, and we were uh, squirting ink with them, which uh, uh, was not good. That was in the 1950s, of course. Um, so, um, then that's basically all there is to, uh, using an, uh, an ink stop fountain pen. Uh, so some folks I've actually heard talk, people talk about, you know, the, the downside of using an eyedropper pen and, uh, they talk about, uh, pens burping. Um, and I, I have experienced that. And of course that's, uh, uh an historical, uh, insight into why they developed the, uh, the pens with, uh, bladders and so on. Uh, there's a famous story about uh, Lewis Waterman, um, you know, writing with an old pen in the, what, 1870s, 1880s, I guess it was, 
and uh, they would work for a little while and then you'd be signing something and it would just dump all the ink at, at once. And so he came up with the revolutionary feed uh, that's got three grooves in it uh, and allows the ink in the flow, uh, ink in the air to flow uh, effectively. Um, so I think that uh, some pens uh, uh, might have that issue. I haven't run into that with the Japanese eyedroppers. And I've talked to a couple of pen people and uh, somebody told me that the uh, the reason why these don't, uh, Ameri the American eyedroppers are straight through, they have the feed, there's uh, not an ink stop, uh, and the feed comes in direct contact with the, uh, with the ink inside the barrel. Um, the Japanese eyedroppers uh, have a little chamber uh, inside uh, the section here. And if you look in, you'll see that there's a little space behind the feed. And uh, when you've got uh, ink flowing into it, the, uh, the ink uh, is actually building up in that little chamber. Now, I'm not uh, you know, an expert or a scientist in, in that regard, but I've not, never had any problem with uh, uh, my Japanese pens uh, you know, dumping ink on me. Uh, so just uh, just an interesting uh, insight as far as the uh, these pens. So uh, anyway, so that's uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, that's how to use an inkstop eye, eyedropper pen. Now, I thought that I'd uh, maybe share just a little bit of uh, history uh, on some of these Japanese eye, eyedropper pens and also maybe uh, some appreciation for them. Uh, the Japanese have been using these pens uh, at least this style of pen from the probably the early 1900s. Uh, I've got a few that uh, I found on the uh, websites, and this is an old one that goes way back. Um, and very interesting, uh, they would actually uh, wear these on their on a belt, um, on their clothing, and uh, you know this they had an, an old the. The fountain pens, uh, of course, uh, were uh, Western, um, and they adopted the Onoto pen. So, uh, but they adapted them to their culture, and so this is a really an interesting one. And it's got an old purse uh, that is obviously <laughs> seen better days. Um, I got this on an auction website, and uh, you know, it didn't uh, get a lot of bids, but I liked it, so I, I got it. And uh, this is an an old eyedropper, uh, you can see, uh, just uh, exactly the same as the new one that I just sent you. And uh, it's made out of uh, ebonite, black hard rubber. It's got an old gold nib, just uh, uh, like the others. And it's got an overfeed and underfeed, which was a copy of the Onoto pen. Now this uh, is interesting because, uh, again, very high quality. The uh, the end piece uh, or the cap, you know, screws on to the end. And uh, I think it's actually pretty cool. And then it uh, screws into the, uh, into the barrel and it's uh, ready to go. I've got, these are very large. Here's another interesting one. This is actually an SS. Uh, there's another company called SSS and uh, I don't know if it was uh, somebody just copying another pen, but this is very huge. Um, here's a standard size pen. You can tell that it's, uh, it's really large. And this is just a uh, for uh, friction feed uh, pen. Uh, it's got a rather large nib, overfeed, underfeed. And uh, once again, it's an eyedropper uh, ink stop. I haven't actually uh, restored these yet. I, I plan to one of these days. And I have a few more uh, that are like that. One interesting thing about these, uh, so this is another one. Uh, this has some little holes there. It would actually, you'd be have a rope on there like the one I showed you a second ago. And again, hang from the clothing, from the belt in the clothing. Now this one has, uh, Again, that overfeed, underfeed, the ink stop. Now, this has another interesting little tool. So this has got a this little ink pad and a kanji character 
and they would uh, actually um, imprint their initial or character representing who they were, I guess. And I think it's sort of uh, sort of interesting. So uh, those again, uh, nineteen early nineteen hundreds, um, and just wonderful pens. Now I've got uh, a whole lot of uh, eyedroppers. Uh, so in my earlier uh, video, I talked about you know the eyedroppers being 1940s, 1950s, and that's accurate, and also earlier. Uh, but one company in particular, uh, the Bonnet Company, made pens all the way up to 2000, I think even to 2010. Uh, these were uh, done by four um, Japanese craftsmen, um, and uh, they had the old technology, the old tools, and were making pens uh, for quite a while. And you can still get their pens uh, on the auction sites. And uh, actually, two different pen companies, um, the um, Visconti Pen Company uh, actually contracted with them to provide pens. Um, and then uh, another uh, company in the United States uh, did the same thing and actually have the, the difference now, the, the Visconti pen is actually uh, marked as Visconti, and they spell they sell for about a thousand dollars. You can see them occasionally, but they're in black and red, and they look exactly like this. I mean, it's just a Bonnet pen, and uh, it's an eyedropper pen, and uh, you know, very nice. Um, but uh, as I said, they come in the black and the red Urushi, and um, so nice pens. Uh, but basically, uh, it comes from a Japanese company, but it's it's Japanese pen. So anyway, um, the Bonnet pen, uh, they uh, had, uh, uh, I guess now I, I will probably mangle the name, but Asuki Sakai, uh, I think was uh, one of the primary cra craftsmen. Then the nib meister, the person who did their nibs was Genjiro Kabutoki. And uh, very high quality, very reliable pens. And uh, these were done, you know, 1990s, 1995, 2000. And once again, high quality. Uh, they did use cork for their uh, seals on these pens. And you have to, I have to go back and actually replace the, uh, the seals with O-rings. And uh, they're great pens, they're beautiful. The only um, criticism I have, uh, and this I think it's fairly standard, is that they on the cap band itself, the, uh, the plating is, is very weak, and oftentimes you'll see the, the plating is worn. Now, that can be replated uh, if you're concerned about it uh, or, um, or not. I mean, that's fine, too. So uh, Now, the nice thing about these pens is they are Urushi pens. Now, Urushi is a, uh, a Japanese um, a lacquer made from uh, the, uh, the Japanese basically poison oak tree. They take the sap and they turn it into a lacquer. Uh, and it's it's uh, volatile to work with and can actually, if you've got an alert allergy, or I mean, most of us don't deal well with, uh, with uh, poison oak, um, it can be hard to work with. So it is a, a, an art within Japan. And this one is covered in black urushi. Um, here I have one in the red. You can tell it's beautiful. Uh, very nice. And the, the nice thing about the Arushi is that it uh, it coats the pen and, and the pen will last, uh, obviously, for a long time. Uh, they actually use the Arushi on a lot of different, um, you know, items that uh, that they've used in, in Japan. And it's a, a real art, uh, which, you know, they're beautiful. Now, I've, this is another uh, Japanese eyedropper pen. Um, and I've had this... Uh, uh, artistically redone. It was a black pen. Uh, and one of the things about the uh, the black hard rubber with these pens is that um, they don't like water. And um, so when I mentioned that I soak the end piece, I actually put the water in the blind cap. The reason I do that is because um, the uh, ebonite, black hard rubber in the pen, doesn't like to be uh, soaked. It'll actually turn sort of an ugly brown um, 
from the water. Uh, and American pens do the same thing. Any of the old black hard rubber pens do that. So uh, they don't, uh, you know, once again, they do not like to be soaked in water. Um, so anyway, this, uh, and oftentimes in a highly uh, um, high humidity environment, uh, the pens will just also uh, turn sort of brownish. I think I have one here. Yeah, you can maybe see it's turned brown. This was originally black hard rubber and it's turned somewhat brown. So um, now there's, there are in, in fact uh, ways of turning it black again. Um, some of the pen people uh, have that methodology or uh, that pen is, uh, is a candidate for uh, refinishing in a, uh, a nicer uh, method. So anyway, this is a beautiful pen. This is a, um, you know, beautiful Urushi and it's got a particular name for the the uh, the pattern that it was done in, and I won't uh, try to to use that because I know that I'll mess it up. Uh, but anyway, uh, beautiful pen, and uh, that's uh, this is another uh, Banet pen that I sent to a lady to uh, to be you know uh, updated. Now this has got uh, Machie. Um, I'm sorry, not Machie. It's got uh, uh, Raiden, Rodden, as they say, which is uh, shell. And uh, it was uh, put into a very beautiful spiral pattern and then covered in Urushi, a beautiful pen. And uh, th that is actually a custom done that I had uh, a lady do for me. And then, so this is another Banet pen. And this was actually done by the manufacturer. Uh, and it's sort of hard to see, but it's got little gold specks uh, scattered throughout the uh, the Urushi. And you can just start to see that it, it uh, reflects the light very beautifully. Uh, very pretty pen. And, um, you know, it's one, it's actually pretty rare. Uh, they did this at the manufacturer themselves and, uh, you know, sent it out. And I, I was able to find one not too long ago. And I'm very pleased to have that. Uh, they come in a, in a, Holly on a box, um, like that, which is a very light wood box. And they come with their own eyedropper. Now, this is one of the reasons I, so you, I don't know if you can tell, but that old eyedropper, it's, you know, only 20 years old or something, but it's completely, if I squeeze it, it's just going to fall apart. So anyway, it needs, uh, it needs a new eyedropper with that. And that's not unusual. And then I mentioned Machie a minute ago. So these were actually um, done and distributed to the United States uh, back in the 1950s, maybe 1960s too. But um, there are a lot of these very large uh, pens. Usually they have a just a steel nib on them, but um, they've got some nice Urushi on them. Some of them do. And this one was actually, you can tell it's got uh, a couple of carp or, or fish, goldfish on it. Uh, and this one is actually signed by the original artist. So you can tell right there, yeah. And really beautiful pen. Uh, you can usually pick these up. A lot of folks have them on eBay for not too much money. The, the plain black ones, um, in may, you know, maybe for, oh, 20 or $30, uh, they have their eyedroppers and you have to restore the seals. Uh, and I have done on this one. And, uh, I actually put a nice gold nib on it that I found. So, uh, if I choose to write with it, uh, it'll be, you know, it'll be a great writer. So that's the fish, and then here's another one that I uh, found on online. It's actually a dragon. Uh, very nice uh, artwork, also signed by that same artist. So when you start getting a signature on a pen, uh, they start commanding maybe a little bit higher price. Uh, I'll just show you one other plain black large pen. This is the Yatsubishi. Um, big pen, plain black. It's got a original Yatsubishi nib, 
in steel, which is fine. And uh, again, another eyedropper pen that, uh, that I've replaced the seal on. So anyway, um, and by the way, uh, Banet is not the only uh, company that used the eyedropper. The uh, Pilot uh, Pen Corporation also has a uh, Emperor pen. It's a very large pen with a size 50 nib, which is huge. And uh, they have them in a plain black or in uh, Maki A, which is the, uh, the artwork on the pen. And they actually use that eyedropper system as well. Uh, and of course, that pen is, is very large and will hold a ton of ink. And they're wonderful pens. I highly recommend them. Um, or even just a plain uh, black bonnet, uh, if you will. Now, uh, the San Francisco Pen Show is coming up at the end of uh, August in, uh, you know, just shy of San Francisco. Wonderful pen show. There'll be a lot of uh, uh, great folks there with their pens. And there'll be a, a number of people that will have uh, Japanese eyedropper pens, including myself. So uh, hope to see you there. And, uh, you know, they're lots of fun. They're great pens to write with and highly enjoyable. Now, uh, I'm going to do another video um, on disassembling and uh, cleaning up uh, Japanese uh, cartridge converter pens um, and how to go about that. Uh, that's not my, my main focus by any stretch, but uh, I've... Uh, I'll explain why I'm doing that uh, in the next video. Anyway, uh, I've enjoyed uh, sharing with you a little bit of knowledge. Oh, I do want to show you one thing. So if you want to know more about Japanese pens, I highly recommend this book, uh, Fountain Pens of Japan. Uh, it's a great resource, uh, about a hundred bucks. Uh, they usually have them at the different pen shows. Uh, the Washington DC pen show is coming up uh, in August. The uh, I think the... Miami Pen Show is happening in July, I think maybe uh, this weekend. And, uh, you know, you can find a lot of great stuff at the, the pen shows. Uh, American pens, Japanese, uh, we often have European uh, folks there to talk about their pens. And uh, so anyway, uh, thanks a lot. And, uh, and uh, if you have any questions for me about uh, using uh, these uh, eyedropper pens, uh, simply email me, D-A-Y-N-I-X at AOL.com, and uh, I'd be happy to respond to you. Uh, thanks much. Bye.